Good afternoon or evening or whenever you're watching this. My name is Janelle Riley. I'm an editor of Variety and I'm so thrilled to be here today for SAG-AFTRA's Conversations at Home with Jamie Dornan. Um, this is an actor who has shown his range in such films as A Private War, Fifty Shades of Grey, and of course uh, on the BAFTA-nominated series The Fall. Please welcome Jamie Dornan. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Chanel. Nice to be here. <laughs> Thank you for f finding a perfect kind of nondescript background, too, to do this on. <laughs> you know, it's funny, this is, um, uh, I'm not going to start showing you around because it's an absolute mess in here, but I'm turning this room into my office. Oh. Um, so uh, my office was somewhere else, but I was sharing this, kind of sharing a wall with my wife, who's a musician. So if we were both um, trying to work at the same time ever, uh, as beautiful as the music she was creating is in the next room, it's quite hard to concentrate on reading scripts or learning lines, whatever you do. So um, I, uh, I've moved my office. So it's, uh, I'm, I've bought paint this week. <laughs> um, so it'll be, le it'll be slightly more descriptive. Um, <laughs> it really wasn't a criticism. It really is like the perfect <laughs> background for this. But we'll come yeah. back in a year and I want to see the before and after. <laughs> yeah. um, you've done this before where this is primarily an audience of SAG members who watch us um, so I always like to start by asking how did you get your SAG card? Yes yeah, so I almost don't remember <laughs> so long <laughs> ago but um, I mean I must have got it for Marie Antoinette which was my first you know I'd never done a commercial before that um, I'd never done a uh, I don't think I had. It's certainly nothing that warranted needing a SAG card. Um, so I had this very odd situation where my first ever audition, first ever job in the industry was uh, in, in, in with Sofia Coppola. I mean, she'd literally just won maybe two Academy Awards for Lost in Translation, and it was the first first job host. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it all sort of happened quite quickly, and I was like... Um, I was like, wow, this is, this is an easy way to make <laughs> a life. You know, I just thought like that was it. I just thought all um, jobs would be that easy to get considering it was the first one I'd ever tried to get. You know, and then I sort of essentially went about eight years unemployed afterwards and, you know, realized <laughs> I, I was on that I just got very lucky early on, you know. Um, so I definitely would have got my sidecar for that. But I'd say by the time I did my next job, but luckily I was sort of modeling in the background. I was able to always do that, and pay the bills or whatever. But um, I, I probably had to, when I did my next job, um, I did some work in the UK where I obviously didn't need a side card in between and some stuff here. But the next time I needed my side card, they probably had to be like, oh, are you still in our system? It's been so long <laughs> since you've worked in the States. Um, yeah, God, that was, you know, 13 more god what year is it now I think. has it yeah, really been that long 16 years ago i think it was 16 years ago wow and that was your first film audition ever um yeah yeah it's 15 years ago 15 years ago. um yeah it was it was it was my first ever i just got an agent uh the week before um and uh a uk agent sorry i just got a uk agent and then I, it was a, they, they were like, listen, we're, the, Sophia Coppola is, you know, directing this thing about Marie Antoinette. Um, it's going to be like a biopic, but with a big difference and sent me the script and the part. And I said, like, wow, cool. What a cool thing. Um, like, and like everybody else, I was such a big fan of her, hers. Yeah. And particularly at that moment, there was just so much hype about Sophia, you know, so I was like, okay. So I met the casting director, Karen Lindsay Stewart in London and read and went quite well and then went, to Paris the next day they were like can you come to Paris the next day and read for it there and I did that and then met uh Sophia and Ross Katz who was producer that night in the, in, the, in the Ritz at the Hemingway bar the Ritz it was so fancy the Hemingway, Hemingway bar the Ritz in Paris um and that was it like I had a drink with them and then got the job it was mad Never That's happens a again. crazy first job I mean not yeah. first job but you know in, in this industry yeah. what a nice yeah. entrance it was. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah. And I want to go all the way to the to the scrappy indie side with endings beginnings. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of the filmmaker Drake Dreamus. Um, he makes these really intimate relationship stories. Movies like like Crazy, 
Were you familiar with his work? Is that what attracted you to the project? Yeah, I was. Um, I had seen like crazy and I'd seen breathe in and being very much like he was very much on my radar, I guess, at that time, like after certainly those two movies, particularly. And I remember um, just thinking that he managed to capture something that you don't see that often and a uh, sort of sense of realism in the performances. And I was like, Jesus, like this guy's, he's, he's really got something. And uh, we, I, his name had come up a wee bit because we were, we're both at UTA and I think, uh, that sort of happens, you know, like the directors at the agency are with their names come up more than directors <laughs> who aren't at the same, you know, uh, agency. Um, and I'd heard good things about him. And then, and then we actually did, we worked together. We did this little short for Hugo Boss, like a couple of years ago. Um, Great. And he, he directed that. And we only, we spent sort of three or four days together in Azerbaijan, like the week before Christmas. Uh, it was very crazy time because I was in the middle of shooting a private war um, which was in Jordan and I flew back from Jordan to like the UK for one night saw my family I hadn't seen in, like four weeks or something and then went to Azerbaijan to this commercial um, and then came home like the night before Christmas or something it was mad um, not ideal under any <laughs> circumstances but Drake and I um, you know uh, often those commercial things can be that very commercial, you know, and, and <laughs> you know, often don't have a lot of heart in them. But uh, I think we made something kind of, you know, really kind of beautiful and cool and just love working together. And so that was up. We were just mates then. We were sort of mates. And then he was like, listen, I'm writing this other thing and, and I'd love you to read it when it's, when it's done. And um, so I sort of, I knew about it before we actually got to the stage of sort of sending, talking about it in, in reality, you know. I never thought about this before, but like commercials are kind of a good test run if you want to know what it's like to work with a director. Maybe, you know, maybe yeah. everyone should, should do that first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, most most directors make commercials too, you know, um, particularly uh, a lot of indie filmmakers who, who are working with very small budgets often uh, with their, their movie work. Um, and, some a lot of those you know i've met so many of those guys who you know you're like wow they haven't made a movie for a while and then you look you know then you look into it and they've been making like you know bmw commercials and yep. you know, getting, like getting paid to do these like mad big jobs you know um what i, I find that line really interesting between you know a, a lot of huge directors like ridley scott and everything started in commercials but then having done a few commercials when i used to model um, there's so many of those men and women who are making commercials that all they want to do is make a movie. Um, they never get to, you know, um, yeah. they really don't. And I'm talking, they're making, they're making, you know, huge commercials with like t million, million, like 10 million budget commercials, but they, they, they'd not get the chance to make movies. You know, it, it's so hard. One of my favorite uh, commercials ever was actually directed by Ang Lee back when they were doing the BMW short films. I mean, I don't know if it's it's a short film, but it's also a commercial. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, God, the idea of Ang Lee, like making commercial, I mean, he's had such a unique and diverse career making movies as well. Actually, nothing would surprise me of Ang Lee. Like, I feel like he could just turn his hand to anything and make it work. You know, he's just like one of those guys, isn't he? I think he'd even won the Oscar at this point. And it was like the first thing he did, yeah, because there's a little homage to uh, Hulk, which was his next movie in, in the commercial slash film. So, yeah, so he, he at that point, he was Ang Lee. <laughs> well, well, good, good show. I'm curious, what, what sort of draws you into a project? Is it, you know, always the script or is it sometimes wanting to work with someone like Drake or is it just you got to do it by project by project? Yeah, I think the latter really, like it's, it's, it sort of depends. I mean, sometimes, you know, um, if, if, if Martin Scorsese sends you a script, you're not, uh, um, uh, it's an offer, you're not reading the script. <laughs> Obviously, you'll read the script, but like, it's a yes, you know, um, certainly for someone like me. Um, you know, there's a, there's a whole host of directors, I think, that like, you hear the name and you're like, well, you know, um, not that I've worked with um, uh, Scorsese, or he sent me anything that I just said yesterday. But I did hear, he, I, someone told me he really liked The Fall once. Which, which I was, oh, really? Uh, that seems yeah, like it would yeah. be his kind of show. Yeah. yeah my, my, mate, my mate was doing a movie with him, and he said, oh, he's talking about The Fall the other day. Oh, cool. Um, 
But I, uh, yeah, it's sometimes, you know, it has to be led by the script, really, you know. Um, but sometimes it's a, you know, I've had situations where I haven't ended up doing something where uh, it's a script that I'm really respond to. And then, you know, you'll meet a director over the, like over Skype or Zoom or whatever, or you get to meet in the flesh. And sometimes that doesn't work. There's no chemistry there. And you think, oh, you know, this shouldn't go any further. I can see why this won't work. And um, it's, it's rare, but that, that can happen, you know. Um, and then sometimes it works the other way where, you know, you have issues with the script, but you really trust the filmmaker or, the, you know, the collective of filmmakers and people they have involved to, to try to make it the best it can be. And, you know, so many different reasons why you end up on standing on set on day one, you know, but I mean, usually it tends to be the, the script. Well, with something like Endings, Beginnings, I don't, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but it didn't really have a script, did it? It was like an outline. Yeah, exactly. It had like a sort of 65, 70 page, um, yeah, skeleton outline script that was um, still very solid. And it's like, you got a pretty good sense of who these people are and, 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 and what they're going through and the complexities of the relationships between the, the three of them. Um, but then there's a huge onus on you as an actor to, to elevate that beyond the, the page and, and uh, you know, and, and for the most part improvise it into something that is uh, totally unbelievable and, and makes uh, what Drake and um, Danielle had written, let that kind of, yeah, become something even more developed, I guess, you know, um, and that's pressure and that's tough and, and uh, it's something I haven't done a lot of weirdly before. The only time I'd done it before was with Sophia Coppola and uh, Marie Antoinette. We had this big sort of party scene with dinner party scene, and it's like me and Tom. Tom, I, nobody really remembers Tom Hardy did one day. <laughs> a, a day and, Tom Hardy did one and a half days on that job, and he, um, you know, I probably did two weeks worth or something. And but Tom was in for a day and a half and had to share my trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, like they're going like um and Tom Hardy had done some good work then but he wasn't the movie star that he is now you know obviously and um, he shared your trailer while you were in it yeah I had like quite a big like pretty jazzy trailer particularly for my first job and they're like listen Tom's gonna have to come in and, and do you mind he's <laughs> sort of put up a sheet and he's gonna um <laughs> we did we shared a trailer um, for for the couple of days that he that he worked on it, um, which is mad. Um, but but he for that there was a scene where we all sat around, um, Kirsten and myself and Rose Byrne and Tom Hardy and there's loads of us, and we improved. But it was very much um, going to be kind of in the background, and there was going to be a song over it, and wasn't huge focus on it. And then you, you with, with Drake's movie of endings beginnings, it's, it's kind of um, uh, you know, 90 minutes of uh, improvisation. I mean, look, there's times he very much set us on our way, um, but there'd be times where he would be like, forget everything that's in the skeleton script. I don't want anything. You see, when you said that, just go with that, elaborate on that. Don't say that, that's not that's not working. Just make more out of that. And you're like, oh my God, like, you know, and the first couple of days, honestly, Janelle, like it was so scary. Um, and I was just going, I'm, I, oh, I can't do this. I can't do it. Don't have it in me. Because I also started a week late. I was shooting something else. I started a week late. So Sebastian and Shailene had already done this week. That all the stuff that in Big Sur, that mm. old road trip, they'd, they'd done all of that. And there's some pretty heavy emotional and physical stuff going on there. So they were all like, Woof, like already, you know, the three of them. Um, and then and you I, come in. <laughs> I come in. I was like, hey guys, let's. Uh, <laughs> Totally new energy. Let's let's try to work with this. And um, uh, and and actually, you know, I think Shay and I had a very different thing to Sebastian and her. Just off the bat, like our chemistry was different, so they ended up they just felt like very different relationships. Um, just in in what we brought to it naturally, and you do bring a lot of your own natural self when you're um, improvising. I think, but the, I, I was certainly never. You know, I always did feel like I was this other guy, obviously, but you more of Jamie leaks in than it would in any other 
gay kids. Yeah. I'm curious about that. Um, actually, first I want to go, I want someone to make the movie about you and Tom Hardy sharing a trailer. <laughs> I want to see that. Like, did he talk to you or was maybe, the, the sheet, you know? Maybe, maybe Tom Hardy should, maybe, <laughs> I, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him and try to, that'd be a pretty funny little sort of vignette, like short thing, wouldn't it? If we yeah. sort of recreated that. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen Tom in years, but um, I wonder, does he remember? Uh, yeah, it was. isn't that mad? It's so mad. <laughs> Just shows what a great casting director Sofia Coppola is right. and has, yeah. Um, so, oh, for those who haven't seen Ending Beginnings, you can catch it out now, it's it's out on demand. Um, but Shailene Woodley's character is, is sort of torn between your character, Jack, who is very kind and reliable, and Sebastian Stan's Frank, who is um, sort of immature, I think is like the polite way to put it. Um, I'm curious, when, when Drake first brought you this project, was it always going to be Jack for you, or was there ever talk of you playing Frank? He sort of said um, to me, I remember the call very well, because he sent it, and I was like, he sent it to me and said, listen, see who you respond more to. Um, because I'm open to the idea of you being either. And I guess he hadn't spoken to Sebastian at this, at this stage. And it was a different actress at this stage too. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I read it and I just responded more to Jack, like I have to say, you know, and I, I called um, I called Drake and was just like, um, dude, I was like, dude, I want to do it. And I, and I'll, 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 I'll prefer to be Jack if you're if you're willing and he said okay interesting yeah um okay let, let, let's let's see how that sits or whatever and then he was definitely meeting other guys you know um I think he was at that stage meeting guys just generally to get a good sense of 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 them and you guys he didn't know or whatever and, and he, he met Sebastian in that that way and um I just, I mean, could, could it have worked the other way around? Probably. It's funny to think about it now, you know, why did uh, Sebastian such a, had a, such a strong hold over, over what he did with Frank, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just was drawn to Jack, I have to say. But yeah, and then we had a, an actress pull out like 10 days before day one. Wow. And uh, kind of wasn't her fault. Like also, A, I'm not going to name her, B, um, I've seen her since, and like she was sort of distraught about it, and it wasn't. It was a co conflicting um, scheduling thing. It really was out of her hands, and you know, having seen the movie, like it makes it even more crazy to me to get your head. I think Shay is just like phenomenal in it, and I think she's just such a joy to watch her work, you know. And then when you consider she came onto that nine days before principal photography, I mean, it's, it's insane. That's amazing. No, you, you, everybody in this movie is so wonderful. Um, I'm curious, because uh, you've played your share of troubled characters, and I'm sure after, you know, so many seasons on the fall as a serial killer, do you think maybe you were drawn to Jack? Were you, did you ever worry about getting typecast as like the bad or the, the dark brooding guy? Potentially, you know, I, I get, I think I maybe even said this to you before, Janelle, but like, I feel like my, I feel like it's such a, you know, gift in, in in this industry, and I'm so fortunate to be in the position I am with it, where I have a bit of choice over what I, what I do, um, and I don't take that lightly. Like I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I understand how lucky I am to be in that position, but given that position, I want to make the most of it, and I feel like I try to have a balance in my career, you know, and and I, I just. I've definitely said this before to lots of people that I just wouldn't be satisfied, you know, being an, like one of those like action guys who just does action movie after action movie, or, you know, it just wouldn't satisfy me. I wouldn't, um, and I'm not discrediting those, 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 those guys, but um, it's just not what I want for me. And I don't think I'd, I'd feel fulfilled if I did that. Um, so I feel like I've played a few dark characters and, and, you know, occasionally, you know, I, I've got a couple of things that I've that I've done re more recently that are maybe slightly nicer, more empathetic, and um, certainly less psychopathic. And you know, <laughs> um, it's it's again, it's just that balance, you know. And you know, I think um, I myself, I'm not a particularly dark person. You know, I'm I'm 
we all have our moments, but I'm uh, I'm more drawn to lighter stuff usually, you know. And I mean, I just did this big comedy um, with Chris and Wig and Annie Mumlo in the summer, and you know that I was so much more comfortable in that world than I have been in any other world of I've, I've spent time in at work, you know. So, but it was nice with Jack to play someone who's pretty morally good, you know. Yeah. And um, but yeah, I think it's a, a, a trying to balance it all out. So not even balance out like good guys and bad guys or whatever it is, but just a range of different types of people, you know. And sh show that, show that. I actually think that that it's there's such a challenge in making a kind and decent character compelling because we tend to kind of like look over there when someone's doing like a fun sort of angsty villain. Um, but Jack yeah. is so interesting and complex without you know just just being i don't want to say normal because i don't know what normal is but you know just being a, a a good guy is is it a challenge to make that character interesting yeah <laughs> yeah i think yeah i guess it is and I, you know if it doesn't feel like a challenge it's not work you know and uh, you know it, it, it uh, you should be shitting yourself every day at work i think as an actor you know i i'm not saying that you don't find a sort of certain level of comfort once you you're into it but like I think every time you go into a scene, particularly if it's improvised, you've got to feel like there's a big challenge ahead of you here and um, you've got to get, find your stride and you're at the bottom of the mountain, you've got to get to the top, and, but you've got to do it without showing that you're <laughs> trying so hard to get there. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I think like it's such a balance uh, as an actor, I think trying to, trying to find that sort of, um, that place of like, realism um without it looking like you're you know very desperately trying to create realism <laughs> you know um and it's even more interesting if it's improvised because you know the thoughts are coming to you and then you're trying to to transpose them from my own thoughts to something that would work for jack and make sense for jack and work with the backstory that you've created for jack and what work with what Shay has just said as Daphne to Jack. There's a lot happening in your head in these, these moments, you know, but then it becomes very freeing. And I find myself just finding the goodness in him as we went on. And I, I sort of find myself um, wanting him to be good more so than I did at the beginning as we went on. I just find him wanting to do, try to do the right thing, which wasn't, totally my plan at the, at the at the beginning so um it was a kind of crazy journey to go on with him it's also interesting because sebastian plays your best friend but you guys don't really get to we don't see you interact much or yeah is that sort of disappointing or did or was there more you shot that they just didn't use <laughs> no that's there's not more we shot no uh it's kind of strange you know it's like one of those things it'll be the big giveaway you know um uh to like, I remember after we did the first series of the fall, um, well, I know you've seen it, but like Gillian Anderson's character and my character, they never meet. Um, but there's like a moment they have in like the, ho the hallway of the, the police station. Um, and there's like a, a, a look, uh, but uh, besides from that, we have no screen time apart. You know, uh, we have a big phone call together at the end, but we never meet. Um, but people used to come up and be like, oh my God, what was Julian Anderson like to work with? That must have been amazing. I'm like, oh, you haven't seen, you haven't seen the fall. Like, <laughs> you know, it was such a great way of indicating or finding out that anyone actually watched it. Um, so, I, you know, I hardly got to know Julian that first series. Um, luckily in the second, third I did. But with similar with Sebastian, you know, we had one night where we had the big party scene. And uh, I remember they kind of, like often with this, you didn't know where the camera was. It was kind of crazy. It was kind of like roaming around and then you'd sort of feel it over here. And, but you'd just be trying to maintain character the whole time. And uh, we'd sort of been told that they'd be trying to find some moments between Frank and Jack, between Sebastian and I. Um, and luckily we did the, 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 the sort of really the kind of only moment apart from when we play that game. Uh, uh, remember what that sort of not it's not a card game but we play that game oh mafia is it mafia? mafia mafia yeah 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 so i haven't played that before you know we're in that moment together but the only sort of physical moment we had um luckily the camera just caught us at a time that like i, I very rarely say anything funny but i just said something quite funny and 
we both, I, I obviously laughed at my own humour and he laughed at it. So we both ended up like laughing in quite a big way. And then I think we had a hug or something, you know, it kind of all worked, you know, but that is kind of yeah. the only moment you see us. And um, they're not very alike, you know, um, but I have a lot of, a lot of my friends aren't very like me. So, you know, um, you know, it's amazing who you sort of end up tight with or whatever. But I think a lot of people, um, watch it thinking how are they why are they how are they friends you know <laughs> yeah they're very different it they must are. be interesting when you're shooting in that style and you don't know what the camera's capturing and you're improvising what's it like when you see the final product are you surprised or did, or did you know sort of what it would look like yeah not you, you it's a, listen it's the first time i've ever sat down to a, a screening i watched it in um a tiff at Toronto it was the first time I watched it and I was with an audience and with Shay and Sebastian and uh, <clears throat> I um, it's the first time I've ever sat down to watch anything I've been in and have no idea what's about to happen <laughs> like no idea yeah. what the sort of beginning middle and then end is going to be um, because we really did uh, you know do a lot of very differing um takes you know and often scenes went a very different direction to um from take one to take four or whatever um so it was sort of interesting to see how they were gonna i mean i don't know how they did it in the edit you know they must have been, i mean they could have made so many different films from it you know um but yeah it was it was a it was a bit of a trip sitting there and not having a clue what was going to happen you know <laughs> it was crazy um, like the only thing that sounds scarier than that is improvising a movie <laughs> yes well i mean listen it's made me want to do it more you know really yeah cuz it's a big challenge and that's what life's about isn't it and um it's uh you know and it, it's it it flexes different muscles that you don't use maybe enough at work and um uh there's, there's an it, it, has, it brings with it an energy that um sometimes is harder to create with a script you know um so i'm it's it's definitely opened me up to it you know i'd love to do it um more if you're doing it with the right people yeah you know i'm pretty much I pretty much only did it with Shailene Woodley, you know, like all, all my stuff with her. And she was just unbelievable at it. Like you're just, you're just being given so much. Um, so uh, I just feel like I got very lucky with, you know, the people I did it with, with Drake at the helm and with Shailene and Sebastian. And I'm guessing just sort of knowing Drake's other films that this was probably on a pretty tight shooting schedule. Yep. Um, <laughs> It was, uh, it was, I mean, that's just the reality of it, you know, um, you know, nobody's getting paid and we're all shooting nights and we're all, you know, um, you know, you're not getting endless takes and you're, you know, like that's, that's, that's that end of independent film, um, but you're getting to have this immersive, incredible experience and I've done a lot of independent film and that's where I feel most comfortable. Um, I've only done one or two at that end of it, um, but uh, it's even more like a family, you know, and that, that it's, it's my whole thing about any independent film, that sort of five to 15 million range is um, everyone just has, you just, everyone, I feel like everyone works harder mm -hmm. in a way because you just have to, you have yeah. to get the dates finished. You have no choice. It's not like we'll come back and shoot this tomorrow, guys, don't worry, we're losing the light. No, 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 you have to get it. It's not like a studio picture where you can go like, oh, whatever, we'll put it on the schedule for next week. No, that's, just, that's not a thing. So um, I love it. I, you know, I, I'm, um, again, balance. I like to, I, I, maybe one studio picture last year, two independent, you know, I think it's, that balance is, is crucial, I think, for an actor as well. Again, luckily enough to have the choice over that, but um, I do, uh, I do think that's a, a, a cool thing. It unites people, that thing of like, guys, we have seven pages to do today and, you know, we can't come back tomorrow. That unite, that unifies people. You know? Yeah, well, absolutely. I'm yeah. curious because they're sort of known for improvising. Did you do much improvising in the Kristen Wiig, Andy Mumolo film? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? It's, it's, Very it's different. different thing, though. It's different if to improvise comedy. I feel like because 
Well, for me anyway, if someone lets me loose, my initial um, place that I go to is stupid to say something stupid, <laughs> and something stupid. Something stupid can sometimes be funny, and then get in the right circumstances, it, it ends up being funny. So, I find it sort of easier to be sort of goofy and funny while improvising than to sort of portray real deep emotional sadness or drama, whatever it is. Um, so, yeah, I was allowed to let rip a couple of times and just keep the you know keep the camera rolling while um, <laughs> I don't know. All kinds of madness came out, you know. I love. I mean, I love that. That movie's going to be a, a trip. I mean, it's meant to be released in July, end of July, but who knows what's happening now? With all this. But, Just um, the trailer looks amazing. Before I even realized it was them, I was excited. Um, was a fun, fun trailer. I've actually heard actors say that um, they can improvise if they're speaking in their their native accents, um, and yeah. that it's you because you just improvising. You want to be off the top of your head, and it's hard when you have to think about the translation. So, was was that taken into consideration? Considering you get to use your real accent in this movie. Yeah, I was so lucky there, um, Drake. You know, he he wrote it um, as as Jack being Irish. You know, and then we. Um, I think there's maybe a version that he originally sent where it wasn't specific, really, you couldn't really tell. And then he sent, he was like, look, I'm going to send you a new draft. And in the new draft, it says, like, Jack talks about growing up in Northern Ireland or something. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like that's great, because it is just, it does make your life much easier, you know, if, uh, particularly if it's like a general American or something, I'd probably, um, shouldn't be too difficult or whatever because you know i'm used to i do that a lot and, but um if it's something like very specific like i was doing like you know kentucky or something and you really having to grapple around and think of you know how to what sound what what shape to make your mouth to get the sound out then you couldn't improvise i mean that would be a nightmare um before we go, I want to remind everyone to look in the comments for information on uh, SAG After Foundation's COVID uh, relief fund. Um, and I'm just sort of asking people, um, you know, in this it's very strange time, what what are you sort of doing? Are there books you're reading or shows you're watching or what's helping you through this time? I'm trying to raise the kids. <laughs> <laughs> that is a full-time job. I mean, that, you know, with three kids under seven. So, you know, it's, it's um, we're homeschooling. You know, I mean, I, this morning I was teaching mathematics, uh, a bit of computers, PE. I mean, luckily for our elders. Yeah, I mean, teach PE. I mean, we kicked a ball around the garden for, you know, half an hour. Um, but I, you know what's been nice about it is that, look, I was three days off starting a, a, a series in, in New York. I had my whole family in New York. We're renting this place in Brooklyn. It was all like... That's where our life was. Kids were going to school in Brooklyn, everything. And then this happened, now we're all back here. So we're, you know, and everyone's safety is paramount here. Um, and it's the sort of unknown of, you know, they sort of put a date towards the end of the year when we'll go back. But like, who knows what's happening? But it means that um, without the immediacy of knowing exactly what I'm doing next, um, I mean, when I'm starting the next job, I have had this time, I think, where it's good to, you know, uh, I've been trying to uh, put more energy into some other things that uh, other projects that I was sort of attached to that, you know, I've got a bit quiet or, you know, I've just bought the rights to book with a producer um, that I've worked with before. And so we're developing that. Um, I'm producing this other movie that I've been attached to for a while that sort of went quiet and now we're trying to, you know, package that and get that something that's ready to go. You know, all these things that I actually just wouldn't be, I'm, I've written that in six, within six days of the, of being back in the UK. Uh, when this all started, I wrote a pilot for a series. I mean, this sort of productivity that I just do not have when yeah. I'm, when you're filming and when you, you know, when you're filming five days a week and then you're, you know, coming home and you're dealing with your, your family and you're looking after your kids the weekend, getting up early with them before you even go to work and when you're shooting, you don't have, you just don't have time to put that energy in. So in a way, um, it's been nice to try to focus on these other projects, you know, um, 
so that's yeah it's been it's been kind of good for that reason i guess but like you know you know we don't need it to continue it'd be, it'd be great to get back <laughs> no. to it. be great to get back to some normality um soon you know are the kids doing distance learning like on the computer they have um yeah the the school send um sort of send lessons every morning and it's kind of like you know there's usually a little video made by their teacher saying, hey guys, morning, blah, blah, they do an assembly, there's a recorded assembly every morning, sometimes live, the teachers have gone into the school and they're doing a live assembly. And then there's like, you know, they've sent, they've sent everyone's been posted out the maths books and everything and we're working our way through and there's a little bit of a blurb about how to get through the the, the, um, the sums that are in front of them. I mean, thank God, Mike. It, it, if my kids were like teenagers, I'd be really struggling to cope with how to get through these classes. Luckily, my eldest is six. So, you know, you know 65 minus 10 is probably the, like, the toughest thing I've had to face in the, in the math class. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. Wait, do they need the computer now? Should they be in class? Oh, well, um, it's the evening where you are. I, well, I, I'm, I'm about to run and they've, m my wife has just made their dinner and it's, it's bath time in about 15 minutes, so I'm, I'm <laughs> going to make up. Um, but the computer, I mean, it's amazing that they do computer pro My six-year-old's doing um, computer uh, like programming and like doing... No little, way. Yeah, I mean, that's mad, man. You know, doing little um, coding. You know, we're like coding together, like this character moves up here and this one moves here. And like, I mean, I, I you know, it turns out they've made it very easy for them to do, but it's incredible that they're even being taught to do that. So it's very cool. Maybe you'll pick up some things along the way. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's when, when they don't make movies and television anymore, I'll be a, a computer a coder. <laughs> well, I don't think it'll come to that. Um, and I want to remind everyone to please check out Endings Beginnings now. Uh, you should be able to find it on, on most platforms. Um, it's such a special movie. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for taking the time. We so appreciate it.